You are now listening to The Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. In this episode, Dr. Taylor covers fibromyalgia. Is it really incurable? This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com. All right, welcome to The Real Health Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Taylor Crick, owner and operator of Align Utah, which is our clinic out here in Salt Lake City, Utah. You can check us out online at www.wealign.com. Utah.com uh, on there, you know, links to this podcast, to our, you know, blog posts, to, to everything else. But check out the website there. What we do in our office is exactly what we're going to talk about today is really a, a three prong uh, approach. It is combining nutrition massively, massively important, you know, cause of, of inflammation and really the root cause of many of our 21st century diseases today, nutrition, true cellular detox, detoxification, but really not just detox. I, I almost, you know, I'm starting to hate that word because it, it doesn't describe exactly what we do. It's more getting your cells functioning properly again, and then they can detox on their own. And then number three, we combine chiropractic, okay, which is the art, the science, and the philosophy of removing interference from the nervous system and the spine, okay, really, really important. And that one, you know, they're all three, I guess, really important with the topic that I want to talk about today, and that is fibromyalgia, okay, fibromyalgia, that's a, a huge, huge problem today. It's crazy how many people are being diagnosed. You know, it's like four to one women to men are being diagnosed. And the populations that we see it in are, you know, oftentimes, in, I don't want to say healthy populations, but oftentimes, you know, it's not like metabolic syndrome, where over the years, you've gotten, you put on, you know, 10 to 15 pounds a year, and now you're obese or, or overweight, and that's come on really slowly. It's a lot more what's called idiopathic, which means we don't know what causes it. Um, even though I would argue that there's just multiple causes, there's no one cause. Um, but yeah, the, it, what it is, is a heightened pain state, okay? And so it, we see a lot of it in a chiropractic office because unfortunately, really, many people associate chiropractic with pain, with neck pain, with back pain. And, and fibromyalgia is, is that, um, but it's so much, so much more than that. You know, it's, it's actually literally diagnosed. There's 18 different pain spots on your body that they'll test. And if you are tender, you're painful in 11 out of those 18, that's how they diagnose you with fibromyalgia. So it literally, it literally translates to, to muscle pain or pain in the, the ligaments, tendons, or joints, but it's unexplained pain all over the body. Okay, and that's how it's diagnosed. That is the, you know, the, the key characteristic of fibromyalgia which that in, in and of itself is horrible to deal with. You know, if you can imagine just being in, you know, eight out of 10 pain all day, I mean, it just sounds un, unbearable. Uh, but the problem too, the scary thing is it, it almost always has other symptoms accompanying it. Almost always has, you know, brain fog, sleep disturbances, uh, other inflammatory issues like digestive issues, energy, chronic fatigue syndrome, you know, closely, closely related with fibromyalgia. Another one of those things that people just, you know, don't know what's causing it. But the thing is, you don't need to know what's causing it. Um, and, and what you need to know is is really a solution. And that's what we're going to provide you with. You know, so many people today, they've gone to their doctors, and, and there really just isn't a good explanation or a good solution. Because, you know, the medical system, you know, their solution is drugs or surgery. And they're just not finding the drugs or the surgery that help chronic fatigue syndrome uh, or that help fibromyalgia. You know, there's certain, you know, Lyricas and pregabalin and you know, gabapentin and different nerve pain 
blockers. There's different anti-inflammatories. And they'll a lot of times have a, a good effect temporarily, but they're ma- causing massive, massive long-term damage. I mean, we all know that they have side effects. Those side effects you know, are, are long-term, not just short-term. They're causing massive damage, even though they might be making your life you know, more comfortable. But there's really no good solution from the medical community. What we have seen in our in our office is we've seen uh, you know great results with fibromyalgia. So that's what I want to talk about today. Now we don't treat fibromyalgia. You know we don't treat any disease. We don't treat any condition. But what we look at is we look at what could possibly be contributing to this. What what could possibly be causing this heightened pain state. And by looking at that and by, you know, just treating the body the same way that we would treat, you know, diabetes or heart disease or any other condition, we remove any interferences. We get the cells functioning again. We get the spine and the nervous system functioning and we start giving the body the right food and the right fuel to keep inflammation down, to keep, you know, the gut from being leaky, to keep the hormones in balance. And we see the body begin to heal. And at the end of this podcast, there's actually an interview that we do with a patient of ours uh, who is one of several, one of many, really, that has literally reversed the diagnosis of fibro. You know, we have a lot of people that would say that they're in remission. If they go back to doing what they were doing, they're going to have a flare up. But as long as they continue doing the things that we've taught them, they're in remission. But we've had several patients, you know, it's been enough years now that they are, they're no longer have fibromyalgia. The diagnosis has been reversed. If they went to a doctor and, and did a, you know, a complete exam, no mention of fibromyalgia would be made because they just don't have the pain. They don't have the fatigue. They don't have the inflammation. They don't have the associated symptoms anymore. So first thing I want to talk about is, you know, what what is fibro just a little bit? Because, you know, like I said, they don't really know, okay? So it's really misunderstood, it's mysterious, but it's it's classified as a heightened pain state, okay? So it's, it's also described as, you know, overactive nerves. Your nerves are overactive. So right away, first thing that I think is nerves, nervous system, you know, you got to see a, a chiropractor. And so what's happening here is that your body, you know, your body produces pain relative to a stimulus. Meaning if I take a, you know, two pound weight and I drop it on your finger from one foot up, it's going to create X amount of pain signals. Pretty bearable, you know, it's going to, you're, ow, it's going to hurt, right? But you're not going to break your finger. But then if I take a 10-pound weight, drop it from the exact same height, your body's going to produce more pain signals, right? And if I drop a 20-pound weight, et cetera, your body's going to produce more pain signals. There's more pain for, for, for more pressure that's put on your body, okay? And so what fibromyalgia is, is a heightened pain state. So you take that same example of a weight, and if I drop a two-pound weight on a fibromyalgia patient, it might feel like a 20-pound weight. So their body is distorting these signals, and it's creating a heightened pain state. It's creating more pain signals for the given stimulus. A lot of times there is no given stimulus. There's no reason for the pain, but still your body is firing off these pain signals. It's a centralized pain state. Okay, so they look at all the different, you know, pathways that are associated with this. So there's a lot of different theories uh, on, you know, your brain and, and pain neurotransmitters that cause these pain signals, substance P, things like that, inflammatory cytokines, you know, looking at hormonal things like sleep disturbances, cortisol, melatonin, your adrenal hormones, DHEA, looking at your cycles with that, with your circadian rhythm of cortisol. There's theories that look at oxidative damage or oxidative stress uh, causing these heightened pain states, but they really don't, don't know. And, you know, with everything, there's not one single cause, there's not one single solution, but there's a combination of things that when triggered just right, you know, with a genetic presusceptibility maybe, then with the right environmental factors, 
then with, you know, a bad spine or a bad gut or whatever the third factor is, it's like the perfect storm that triggers this response. And so we have to look at what could be triggering this response and start pulling those things out to reverse that. And I hope that that makes sense. The first one that I'll mention is chiropractic because many people just have a a misperception of, of what chiropractic really is. And so if you think about it, your health, your well-being, your longevity, everything is basic, based on perception and adaptation, okay? Perception and adaptation. And so I want to explain that really quick. You know, when you step outside and it's 110 degrees out in the summer, your body has to perceive that. Right? Otherwise, you're going you're gonna to heat up and, and you're going to die. Right? If your body doesn't lower your temperature, you can't survive at 110. We survive at 98.6 plus or minus a couple. So your body has to perceive that first. You have sensors on your skin that say, oh my gosh, it's hot out. And they perceive that. They send those signals through the nervous system to the brain. The brain has to compute and coordinate those signals and adapt. So what's it going to do? You're going to start sweating, right? That's a cooling mechanism. It's going to lower your blood, lower your heart rate, different things like that, or lower or speed up your heart rate rather, and continue sweating, things that are going to cool your body down. Your body has to perceive and adapt to make that happen. Take the same example. You step outside, it's the middle of winter, you're naked. Uh, what does your body have to do right away? Your body has to perceive that it's cold, and it has to send those signals to the brain, send them back out to the body, to the muscles, to the cells. It's going to make your muscles shiver because that creates heat. It's going to do other mechanisms, built-in mechanisms, to raise your heat. Now, if it doesn't do that, or say you're naked, it's 32 degrees out, that that stress overpowers your body's ability to perceive and adapt, you're going to die. Right? So your body's ability to perceive its environment and adapt to it is the most important thing for our overall health, for our overall life. I hope that that makes sense to everybody. Now, the next step with that is what controls that. It is the nervous system. The nervous system. The nerves have to perceive the signals. They have to send the signals to the spinal cord, sends them up to the brain where they're computed, where they're coordinated, and then what's called an afferent signal is sent, uh, excuse me, efferent signal is sent out, is sent out to the nerves, to the muscles, to tell it how to adapt to the liver, to the spleen, to the kidney. You know, there's all kinds of adaptation mechanisms that are happening at all times, not just with hot and cold, but with higher low blood sugar, with higher low thyroid hormone, et cetera, et cetera. There's millions of different perception and adaptation processes happening at all times. And that's a little bit, you know, next level physiology. But you think about just the the basic concept of it. Your body is the thermostat. It's got to keep your temperature level. It's got to keep all your other levels level. Okay. So the only thing that does that is the nervous system. Fibromyalgia is quite literally a problem with that perception and that adaptation. Your body is getting signals, sending them up to the brain. The brain's computing and adapting, and it's sending out more pain signals than it's supposed to. There is a problem somewhere in the communication. That is exactly what chiropractic does, exactly what chiropractic looks at. The spine's job is to surround and protect the nervous system. They're intricately related. When the spine gets stiff, when the spine can't move properly, when there's joint restriction, when there's inflammation, this affects those neurological pathways, that process of perception and adaptation, and causes neurological deficits, overactive nerves, underactive nerves, etc. But it's a nervous system problem. Chiropractors look at the nervous system through the spinal column, affect and adjust the spinal column, removing interference from the nervous system, restoring nervous system function, normal perception and adaptation is restored. That is the number one most important thing, in my opinion, that any fibromyalgia patient 
can do. They've shown that fibromyalgia patients, you know, in studies have the same heightened nerve sensitivity that a person has after a whiplash injury because of the trauma that it causes to the nervous system tissue, to the spinal tissues, muscles, ligaments, spinal cord, uh, all those nervous system and, and musculoskeletal system tissues, all those that become damaged and cause heightened pain sensitivity, aka fibromyalgia. Okay, so that, that's the number one most important thing that we can do uh, is get adjusted, get your spine adjusted. The next thing, you know, look at your nutrition, huge, huge part, obviously. Uh, with any pain signals, and especially with fibro, you know, there's absolutely an inflammatory component. There's inflammation. You ask any fibro patient if they think they have inflammation, they will answer without having to think about it, yes, I feel inflamed, as in inflamed like on fire. Okay, so there's inflammation. Diet plays a huge role in inflammation. Now, I would say that the diet is, is such an important part because you can't get well without it. You just can't. You know, if you keep eating the standard American diet, you're not going to get well. There's no pill, there's no potion, there's no lotion that's going to overpower the negative effects of a bad diet. So you can't get well without it. But for most fibro patients, I would say that you're probably not going to get well with diet alone. You're going you're gonna to get positive changes, absolutely. You're going to get huge changes. But combining these three together is, is really important. Uh, so the diet is a part of this. It's not the whole solution. But looking at anti-inflammatory things, you have to decrease sugar. You have to increase your anti-inflammatory good fats like salmon and avocado and grass-fed meats and butters. And, you know, a lot of times we'll get a, a fibromyalgia patient even on a, a ketogenic diet, which has been shown to down regulate inflammatory pathways. It's been shown to upregulate or improve brain neurotransmitter pathways and balance these neurotransmitter pathways. So it's not just about weight loss, it's really about decreasing inflammation on a cellular, on a brain, and on a neurotransmitter level. But the diet's a huge part. You know, go back and you know, look in the show notes or go back to past episodes if you want to learn more about the anti-inflammatory diet. Once you're eating the foods, then you can start adding, you know, anti-inflammatory supplements in. I would say, you know, work with a practitioner on this. A good example is, you know, omegas or, or probiotics. People will start taking those and they'll just keep taking them for the rest of their life because they heard that it was good, but you, you know, it could be damaging. You want to cycle, you want to vary, you know, go back to the a couple couple episodes ago in the podcast, um, one called Diet Variation. It also talks about supplement variation in there. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot that you can do. I would also say with this, there's a lot of information out there. 99% of fibro patients are not going to be able to do this on their own. That doesn't mean that it's never been done. That doesn't mean that you can't do it. You know, be that one out of 100 uh, but for most people, there's just so much information about that that you're going to get good bits and you're going to get good pieces, but it's never going to be put together into a package uh, and a program for you to follow. So you really need to work with a, a practitioner um, to, to, to make this happen correctly for you and get the best results. The third thing, the third thing that we do is, is true cellular detox. And this is really the icing on the cake. You know, we, we used to get great results with fibro. Uh, before we did this, um, but they didn't. I mean, they weren't as good. This is, uh, you know, really truly amazing program. And you know, like I say, I hate the word detox when it when it comes with this because it's just the name of of the program. It's a ninety day supplement program and you know lifestyle program that that we implement in our patients and teach them. It's stuff that we've always done, but they, we've made it so much easier. It's so much easier. Instead of taking 10 or 12 bottles of supplements home and saying, you know, take two of these in the morning and one of these in the afternoon and 10 drops of this at night and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, it's, it's just a nice, easy take home. You take a packet of supplements in the morning. You take a packet at night. What they do, though, is the magic thing. What they do is the most important. The supplements are designed, you know, not just to detox like, you know, most things that you've seen or things you may have done like, you know, 
clear your gut out or do a liver flush, which are really good, but it's not about the downstream pathways. There's plenty of things out there. Your nutrition, like we already talked about, has a big effect on your downstream pathways, on your liver function, on your gut function, on your kidney function. This is cellular detox. So these supplements are really specifically, specifically designed to get your cells functioning again, to do some things called like reestablish methylation. Methylation, massively, massively important process in fibromyalgia, in chronic fatigue, also in, you know, certain things like even autism, you know, a lot of people have read about or heard about the MTHFR gene where you're, you're, you just don't methylate very well. You have decreased methylation. So we have to increase methylation. We have to increase cellular energy. Another huge one with fibro. This is, you know, a lot of times one of the first supplements that we'll get people on is let's boost that cellular energy because they're so drained. They're so tired. They say, you know, I want to exercise. I want to, you know, put the time into planning and preparing my, my fresh organic meals, but I'm so tired. I can't get out of bed. So we've got to get the cells functioning again, making ATP, restoring cellular energy. Probably the most important component to to anything is restoring the health of the cell membrane. The cell membrane they've found is, you know, really the, the brain of the cell, the heart of the cell. It is, you know, on a cellular level, what does all the perception and adaptation. It lets the good things in, it lets the bad things out. It perceives the environment and then adapts Accordingly, So if the cell membrane is massively inflamed, if it's damaged, if it's oxidized, which, by the way, is a test that we measure in the office, you know, urine test, the meta-oxy test that actually measures cellular oxidation and inflammation. Uh, It's really quick and easy. It's 50 times more accurate than a blood test. When your cells become oxidized and inflamed on the membrane, little bits and pieces of that membrane break off. And you can measure them pretty easily in your urine. Um, and yeah, that's a, that's a big deal, restoring cellular membrane function. So true cellular detox, then using true binders to really bind those toxins and bind the really bad things. Once you get your cells functioning again, you know, for a lot of fibro patients, that alone would, would help them symptomatically. But what's the root cause? What caused their cells to function improperly in the first place? Was it heavy metals? Was it, you know, fillings? Was it, uh, you know, tap water? Was it, you know, what were the toxins? Was it your your home care products? Was it, you know, lead from your mother? Uh, Who knows what it was? But you got to get those toxins out or else the inflammation is all just going to come back. So we use true binders to bind those toxins. We use a product called Cytodetox, the first and only product to be able to cross through the gut membrane, cross through the blood-brain barrier, get out of the blood and into the brain, and then literally cross through the cell membrane and cross the mitochondrial membrane. All these things have been proven. This is you know, developed by a world-renowned heart surgeon. The Cytodetox product goes into the cells, literally into the cells and into the brain cells. We use other other supplements to drive it into the brain cells during what's called our brain phase. But it goes in there, it binds these toxins, and then it gets rid of them. It gets out of the body. So you're not only getting your cells functioning again, you're not only getting a burst of energy, but you're getting rid of the source, you're getting rid of the cause. What we have found and what I truly believe is that by combining these three healing techniques, by combining nutrition, things like diet variation, things like a ketogenic diet, things like anti-inflammatory foods, intermittent fasting, all these ancient healing techniques with nutrition, uh, then doing true cellular detox, taking the right Supplements. So many people are, are, you know, they Google their supplements and they're taking a fish oil, they're taking a vitamin D, they're taking a probiotic. And and first off, a lot of them are crap, but they're not necessarily the things that are going to get you well. They're good for everybody. You know, they're not, you're not, a lot of times you're not doing it more harm, but they're not going to get you well. Um, They're going to maintain you, you know, once you get well is is more like it. Uh, And then you add in that third component, chiropractic. That's literally what an adjustment does is upregulates your body's ability to perceive its environment and adapt accordingly, which is, you know, the core of fibromyalgia is your body is adapting improperly uh, and we want to figure out why. So listen to our interview, you know, next with Erica, who's, who's a patient of ours, you know, starting, you know, over two years ago, you know, several years ago, but now... 
was that three years ago? I think it was two years ago. But now is actually working for us, you know, because she's just really passionate about what has happened in her life. You know, she's in her low 30s now. This was diagnosed at 22. This changed her life. And that's the shameful thing is that this isn't a a 60-year-old disease oftentimes. A lot of people do have it at that age, of course. But we see, you know, young, fit, active should be relatively healthy most of the time girls, you know, a 27-year-old that was on 17 medications that got off every single one of them, uh, Erica, 22 years old, and, you know, other people that, you know, they're young and they're fit and they just want to be able to exercise, they just want to be able to live their life, and they can't. So anyway, listen to Erica's interview. If you're in the Salt Lake area or you're not, you know, get reach out to us, schedule an appointment at our office. The information is in the show notes. You can find it at our website website, www.wealignutah. If you're outside of the area, you want to schedule a phone or a Skype consultation, we're happy to do that. We can even get you started, you know, remotely on the right supplements, the right nutrition plan. We can help connect you with a chiropractor in your area that's really going to help you. But, you know, uh, this is not an incurable disease. Okay, and it will say that on on Google. It will say that your medical doctor might say that. You know, somebody will tell you that it's not all in your head and it's not incurable. There's absolutely something that you can do. At the very least, it's absolutely improvable in 100% of cases that are out there if you're not doing these things already. So give our office a call, continue researching, listen to Erica's interview, uh, and, and find out what's really causing your symptoms rather than just trying to mask them as the underlying you know condition continues to get worse and worse and worse. So as always, this is the Real Health Podcast. This is Dr. Taylor Crick. Make sure you check the show notes. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, uh, on Pinterest. We got a ton of stuff on Pinterest, etc. Because this really is, you know, something that you have to keep learning about. You have to keep diving into. It's my passion. It's what I do all day. Uh, and that's what I'd recommend that you do too, to some degree is just keep learning, keep educating yourself and keep getting a little bit better and a little bit better. Thank you for listening to the Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com.